And here we go again. Midjourney has added another feature to version 5.2 and it is fantastic. So yeah, I said it and I'm not even sorry about it. Today, we're gonna dive into Pan, but we're also gonna take a look at what some of its limitations are. Plus, we're gonna take a look at some stellar uses, which I think are going to inspire you for your next Midjourney session. Okay, let's dive in. So panning is a fairly simple concept. It's a lot like outpainting that we did with Zoom, except now you have directional control. To do it, you simply upscale an image and you now have four directional buttons underneath it in which you can pan. So let's start with the fairly basic prompt. Uh, this is photograph, Instagram model, and the flag of Andoria. Uh, I don't know if you guys missed that earlier, but you can put a flag emoji in and the model will be someone from that country. So I'm learning all my flags now, it's really fun. Once we have our image upscaled, we can simply hit the pan button and we now have an image that extends to that side. Now, occasionally you're gonna run into some pretty weird things like in image number one, where like her evil doppelganger is standing to her left. Uh, but you know, the other three images are pretty much on point. Once we've committed to one of those and upscaled that, we can then move to the other side, which we do here. And we now have a panoramic version of that same photo. Once again, in number three, her evil doppelganger is lurking in the background. Again, once we've committed to another one, we can then use our zoom out function and we have some pretty solid choices to choose from. Interesting fact I just learned about Andorra, it has the most tourists per capita in the world. It has over 10 million visitors annually. I don't know, I kind of want to visit now. Now, one thing I've definitely noticed in version 5.2 is that the characters tend not to be quite as bullseye compositioned as they were in previous versions. For example, in 5.0, or in four. In four, we really got it a lot. But what's interesting with Pan is that we can actually get it back if we ever need it. For example, this is a samurai in a grassy field at magic hour, aspect ratio of 16.9. You'll notice that he is standing slightly to the right. He's definitely within the rule of thirds. Uh, it's a well-balanced and well-composed image, but if we did want that dead centerness, we could actually just pan to the right, and now we've basically moved him back to that center frame, albeit in a much wider aspect ratio, um, which tends to feel a little more cinematic if you ask me. And yes, I am aware of the irony that I've spent like the last two versions trying to figure out workarounds to not have bullseye composition. Now that we don't have it, I'm working on hacks to get it back. I mean, it's just what I do. But what's also cool about Pan is that we have the ability to add to it. Uh, so for example, this is Cinematic Still, filmed by James Cameron, a marine in a spaceship corridor, anxious horror film lighting at an aspect ratio of 16.9. Now, if we were to pan to the right, I could add Cinematic Still, filmed by James Cameron, a xenomorph in a spaceship corridor, hungry, horror film lighting at an aspect ratio of 16.9. And once we hit that, we get a scene that I think tells a story, a very short story, mind you, but a story nonetheless. One quick note, because I have heard it in the comments a few times, people saying like they'll hit zoom or they'll hit very and they won't have the option to change their prompt. You're gonna wanna go into forward slash settings and just make sure that this remix mode is turned on. Speaking of settings, another interesting use case that I've run across is the ability to create actual like text words with Midjourney. In all honesty, this is a fairly frustrating experience, but you know, you might want to give it a shot just to see what you get. So the first thing that you'll want to do is go into your settings and make sure that low variation is turned on and then prompt in the format letter is for letter. So in this case, I did T is for T and after you upscale it, you can pan right. And then I did I is for I, and then followed that with another pan at M is for M and I got Tim. Now, again, it's a pretty frustrating experience and that took me way longer than it should have. Um, there were a lot of results like this or other unsuccessful attempts like this and other nonsensical ones like this. Uh, one other trick that I had to do when I had that TI is that the M didn't have enough room and I actually had to zoom out one. Uh, I did a custom zoom at one and that seemed to give it enough space to get that last M in there. There are definitely better platforms to do this on. I think Adobe Firefly actually has a nice AI text generator. Um, but again, this is just something that you can do in Midjourney. Uh, maybe it gets better or maybe you experiment around with it and discover some really cool results. The first thing that I thought
thought of when I saw the feature was to do a scrolling type image based off of the Apple TV show Silo. I just finished the first season the other night. Uh, it's great, high recommend. In the world of the show, they all live in a giant silo, obviously. Uh, there are no elevators and the only way you can travel from level to level is via a grand staircase that basically runs from the bottom to the top. So I thought that would be a really cool use case for trying out something that scrolls upwards. So I got kind of close in my initial attempts. Um, it's clear that Midjourney has been trained on the show Silo, but it kind of understood the concept well enough. But while rolling around, I stumbled onto this, which is not the show, but kind of has this weird, super cool, futuristic 70s kind of vibe to it. So I was like, you know what? Maybe let's try that out. Uh, so I started panning upwards from here. But what you'll quickly notice as we start moving up this shot is that the details really start to get fairly soft and fuzzy. And by the time we're like three levels up, it's pretty much unusable. Now, this isn't the case with all pans. In fact, we're going to take a look at a horizontal one that I think works remarkably well in just a little bit. But I think when you have something this detailed and you start iterating on it either, you know, horizontally or vertically, things can get kind of soupy due to the amount of resources that are devoted to any one particular image. The other thing that wouldn't have worked with this image anyhow is the fact that there is no flat perspective to it. So I decided to take a new approach with a similar post-apocalyptic underground society. Fallout, which I'm sure that most of you are familiar with, had a mobile game that was released shortly before Fallout 76. It's one of the few sort of mindless mobile farming type games that just for some reason it really sucked me in. So I decided to use that as inspiration to try to do this sort of silo experiment. So the initial image was three-story Fallout shelter style by Fallout game, interior view, uh, flat perspective, no roof, no lens distortion, and these were the results, which looked pretty cool. And we got pretty decent results as we started panning up. But I'll say by the time we hit about the eighth level, uh, the overall originality and sort of fidelity and amount of quality in all of the models really started to kind of become pretty bland. If you compare where we are at the top level to the image at the bottom level, there is a pretty significant difference. That said, where I think Pan is really strong, as is often the case with Mid Journey, is when you give it abstract prompts. Uh, for example, this is beautiful and time. Panning to the right and adding in beautiful time and city gives us this. I continued that on with beautiful time and dreams, followed that with beautiful wandering and dreams, at which point with this montage, like I couldn't help but see a very loose narrative so I went back to our initial image rolled left with beautiful slumber dreams and then went back to our ending image and concluded it with beautiful awakened morning which kind of ends up creating this sort of linear dream journey uh, even though <laughs> apparently she's not waking up until like 11 10 in the morning yeah I'm judging a little bit she clearly does not have kids that she has to like haul to like swim in soccer practice 11.10. Notice apparently clocks are accurate in Mid Journey now. To be honest, I've actively avoided using clocks since like version three when we had like the Salvador Dali version of time. So that's interesting. We have real functioning clocks in Mid Journey now. So let's take a look at some pretty interesting examples of what others have been doing with Pan. Uh, this is from Janie Fitzgerald at Janie Fitzgerald on Twitter, uh, who created a sort of panoramic 360. It looks like this might be a VR type thing. I don't know what that little icon down there at the bottom is. It kind of looks like Google Glass, um, if anybody, or Google Cardboard, I'm sorry, if anybody remembers that. So I, I tend to think that this might be some sort of VR application, but it's really, really cool. So it goes to show that we probably aren't that far off from creating VR environments in Mid Journey. Brian Marley, at underscore Brian Marley created this pretty cool cinematic using parallax effects in CapCut. And you can see where panning comes into play, like in this shot here, where it kind of shifts over. That is definitely using a cut with pan. Yeah, so it's interesting to see that you don't actually necessarily have to use pan as one continuous thing. You can actually use it to sort of buy two shots in one. And finally, Anton Bagayev, who is at Crash2709, uh, created this insanity by adding weird into the mix, which is fairly brilliant. So it's a zoom out, 
obviously um i think at this point maybe weird has kicked in um weird has definitely kicked in by this point uh and then weird is definitely still here for this so that's panning and i mean at this rate who knows what's next for us in mid journey so please let me know what you think of panning and what you hope the next feature to be added is going to be i thank you for watching my name is tim